Hey, what is up, y'all? It's your boy Kevin Yee, the Farm D, aka Kevin the Refugee. Today, I am actually doing a live stream about how to start your own clothing brand with no money. If you can't see, I actually have my own T-shirt line, which I give twenty-five percent to um, to charities around the uh, to refugees around the world, and I feel very strongly about that. You know, um, so funny. I was actually talking to my friend Paul Paul Tran. Um, he also has a pharmacy channel. And he was very curious about starting his own uh like merch and stuff so this was actually inspired by him i had a um so i also run an accountability group and uh one of the people in my group joe he was very interested in how to start a clothing like clothing shirts and all that sort of stuff uh without any money so today i'm I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert at this sort of stuff, but I have like now that I've completed the whole process, I want to show you exactly how you can do this without any money starting up or anything like that. And if you and I eventually want to write like a a long article um, about this. So Carlton soon. Sue, sorry. Oh, HTC in the house. We got we got Carlton. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, so I am going to teach you how you guys to create your own clothing line with no money because we all know that uh, sometimes it's, it's kind of ex ex kind of expensive to start one up. Um, but let's go. Let's go into it first. Right. So first thing, how do most people start off when you hear I want to start a T-shirt brand or I want to create T-shirts? What do most people think? They think, oh, shit. I got to find someone to make the t-shirts. I got to find someone to design the t-shirts for me. And I got to figure out, I have to do distribution, ship it out. How do I handle payment? It's a lot of muddle bullshit, right? And it can be quite costly because you're always consistently. Oh my God. You're always like holding inventory. So that, that can cost quite a bit. By the way, side note, I'm actually drinking, uh, this Costco LaCroix, which is actually pretty good. I think it's actually the same manufacturer. But anyways, um, yeah, so a lot of people are like, oh, shit, I got to find like some cheap, cheap T-shirt company manufacturer and figure all this out. It's a lot of headache. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, like my first business that I ever did, it was with my brother. Uh, like literally we were doing protein powder. We were literally we bought bulk powder and we would like literally transfer that into jugs and stuff and it was a pain in the ass uh getting things out to people is a pain in the ass no one likes delivering shirts to the mail like to the mail office and doing all that fulfillment it's not very fun so today i actually wanted to show you um a little bit about let me make sure my browser is ready uh, how come my video is not working? Let me see. Oh my God. Huh? Why isn't this working? Shit. Oh, fuck. We got five people in this house. God damn it. It's not popping up. Shit. Oh. Man, I want to show you guys my, my screen and stuff. Glitch in the matrix. I know this sucks. Like sometimes like with technical issues, this happens, man. It's not working. No, that's inception right there. Bitch. Um, okay. So yeah, so Earlier, I was just describing like how how like that's the typical thing. But these days we have th something called print on demand, which is really cool. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Dude, what the hell? Oh, 
<sighs> okay. So yeah, whatever. Um. So. God damn it. Sorry about the technical issues, guys. I usually prepare for this sort of stuff, but I don't know why it's not working right now. Maybe I should make this bigger. Uh, this is not working. This is not working. What's up, Sammy? What's up? What's up? Okay, so not everything is like literally breaking right now. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, because I wanted to take you on the journey of how I started a clothing company. So, or not clothing company, but t-shirts for my, my brand Refugee Hustle right here. So, Patrick, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um... So, you know, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I opened, I think one of the reasons, like, why I wanted to create something was because, like, the other day I was opening up my closet and I had a ton of shirts. I think the last thing I need was another fucking shirt. And I was like, dude, if I really want to create something or, like, wear, like, start a sh clothing company or anything like that, I was like, I don't want people just to wear a fucking shirt. And I don't know where it came from. I, like, dude, I think it was when I was, like, actually staring at my logo i was just like huh you know this is really cool but what makes this different and i was like oh shit you know what i'll do i'll give 25 percent i'll give 25 percent of my profits to to charity and that's why i like that's the thing right um i would give 25 percent to refugees around the world and something like like that really hit home for me i was like dude that would be so cool so I think a lot of the time, like I, I, I used to look at brands like Tom and whatnot. They would give like a pair of shoes to some needy people. But after doing a lot of high ticket like sales and stuff, I've been just realizing like you have to have a really strong why about like your clothing or whatever you sell. That's why I recommend um, like if you guys haven't and if you guys can't afford the book, you can at least watch the YouTube video. But I have this book start with why really great book on branding and that's how i actually came up with this idea of like giving back to refugees because it was like one of i don't know i think it's it's so cool to start like a second new life for someone else around the world i feel so strongly about giving back to the world you know in our own way and um one of the things that i use to give back is fuck it's like really disoriented right now because my windows aren't working. Let me close this. Let's do this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I fixed it, sort of. I fixed it. Okay, I got this. I got this. I know what to do. Hold on for a second. Bear with me. I got this. There we go. Cool. Yes, finally it's working. Yes, yes. Get rid of this bullshit. Get rid of this bullshit. Awesome. Yes. Finally figure this shit out. Belt time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Three Kevins is better than one. Oh my God. Now I figured out how to do this fucking screen share because it was pissing me off. But yeah, guys. So recently I actually uh, released my whole clothing, my clothing thing on Teespring. And this is what like Teespring is like just one example, but it's called print on demand where they'll basically do all the fulfillment, do all the uh, shipping for you. Like for me, I don't really want to drive to a fucking mail office to deliver shirts and stuff. Even though it's really cool, that's not something I want to do. I'll be honest, 
Uh, te Teespring is just okay. It was just the easiest to set up for me and easiest to do donations. But there's other sites, things like Printful, stuff like that. Printful is actually really cool because um, you can, my friend Rohan, he was telling me that you can do like inside tags and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, man, like, um, like literally you can do so many different products. So I have some female shirts. I also have like uh, a mug and stuff too. Um, there's a lot of different options. They have this whole sort of, uh, hold on. Uh, it's like lagging, but they have this whole sort of selection that you can, you can do. And you know, like for a long time, I've been kind of considering it. I mean, when I first started refugee hustle, I was like, no, I don't want to do shirts and shit just because like, I'll be honest. There's not that much profit for shirts to be, to be completely honest with you. Um, it's more of a volume game and I wasn't really interested in that, but I thought it'd be cool branding for myself. And I don't know, it makes me, f at least it makes me feel like a little more legitimate, you know what I mean? But yeah, like, dude, you can tell like right about here says 25% of the proceeds will go to UN uh, agency and stuff like that. So that means, uh, hold on, let me adjust this really quick. Sorry guys, this stream is very like, I know very sporadic and shit, but yeah, see, you can see that, uh, 25% of my profits are going to a charity, which, which means a lot to me. Right. So this is how I did it, but I'm going to take you today. I'm going to, I want to take you step by step about how to actually create your own type of thing too. Uh, are you making merch now? Your father must be so prou proud since you dropped out to become next Ty Lopez. Oh, pathetic. Whatever. Fuck you. Hater, whatever. Are you giving back to fucking refugees? Eat a dick, man. <laughs> dope. Is this your dope merch? Yeah. Sorry, I'm broke. Can't, can't. Blah, blah, blah. Fucking trolls, dude. It's trolls, 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 trolls. Hello, we got trolls, Kevin. We got hella trolls. Guess what? You know what, troll? You want to meet me on, uh, dude, I'm so willing to jump on Zoom with your ass and just argue with you. Let's go. Let's go. Um, no, but seriously, let's, uh, hold on, cancel this. Cool. So I want to take you like, fuck these trolls, fuck them. At the end of the day, they're not doing shit with their life. So one of the ways that I actually got my design for refugee hustle was something through 99 designs. So how 99 designs works is that you basically get a whole list of designers to, uh, to like create different logos and all that sort of stuff with you. Um, I can try to look up my old, my old work and stuff and show you guys. Oh my God, this is so slow. So basically you do a bidding, you can do like a bidding type of thing where you get all these different designs for like, um, whatever you want. And then you can give, uh, you can give feedback whether you like a design or not. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to, uh, you don't have to use it, but, and you, you get your money back. But for example, right. Uh, 99, one thing about 99 designs though, it's kind of expensive to be honest with you. Um, it's a little expensive. I think it's like 400 for the bottom package and then like, like all the way up to like 600. So it can be very expensive. And so here you can see as it's loading, right. You can like see all the different designs that people submitted to me and like some of them are good. Some of them aren't. Some people obviously copy each other. Like look at these designs, right? They copy this like main design here, but, um, basically you can have people like bid on bid on certain designs, right? I thought this design was pretty cool, but everybody starts copying each other after a while, right? <laughs> Chinese people, bro. Um, you can also use something like called Fiverr too. Uh, Fiverr is like where you can outsource, like you can like get people to work on projects for you, everything from writing to videos, to music, to even, a pr uh, promoting like any sort of, like, let's say you want to do paid ads for like, uh, any sort of Facebook ads or anything like that. You can, um, use Fiverr for that as well. So this is like how you get your design. And once you get your design, let's like, let's pretend for a second, right? 
uh, I want to create a, I'll just copy this campaign, right? Let's say if I duplicate, oh, look, I already got one sale and five donations, five dollars in donations. Hell yeah. Oh my God. Let's see what the comments are saying. Meanwhile, I'm pretty curious. So I'm like, my computer is kind of uh, sort of creating a campaign right now. Blah, blah, blah. He already necked. Logos for a wine ball. Try and pick your blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, what the fuck is your problem, man? There's so many fucking trolls. Eat a dick, guys. Thanks for supporting my thing. You keep on supporting my channel. Thanks for reviews. Thanks for watch time, bro. Here, I'm going to start banning people. Fuck you. You want to talk about my dead dad, you fucking asshole? Okay, cool. Cool. Who else wants to talk about my dead dad, motherfuckers? Yeah. Oh, lol, 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 he already ne- blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. Fuck you. Who else, wants to, who else wants to fucking talk shit? Do you ever consider changing your name? Most of the idea don't- uh, Most of the people don't like the idea of being a refugee or having to hustle. Um, For my market- Refugee hustle is very is very strong. Maybe you don't resonate it with it, but a lot of immigrant families do. Funny though, you don't have a YouTube nor anything in backup to help other people. Hit him with the ban, Kevin. Hell yeah. Who else wants to fucking uh talk shit, man? <clears throat> Who else wants to talk shit? Because guess what? Haters that are on my channel right now, are you guys helping fucking refugees around the world? No. Are you guys adding value to people who want to start a clothing brand? No, shut the fuck up. All right, so, so this is like the Teespring. Uh, so back to back to the Teespring, right? Here we go. Back to Teespring. We these are all the designs, right? So you can choose like premium tees, like long sleeve tees. There's a bunch of different like type of things that you can do. They have everything from like really cheap designs to really like more expensive designs. Like for me, I really like the uh, premium premium type of stuff because, I mean, if you think about it, your brand, right? If you think about it, your brand. If people are wearing it maybe five years down the line, do you want it all faded, ripped up and shit? Do people really want that shit? Hell no. So you can add, even like add text, blah, 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 right? And move that around. You can change your font. Uh, you can move it around and shit. So there's all that. Um, this is the fun part though. Like, let's say if you really like uh, organization, maybe like, I don't, and you can set your prices and stuff. Um, let's say if there's an organization that you really like, this makes it so freaking easy. For me, like, I, I care about refugees, but if you have like a, a child, like if you care about children, let's say you want to do saint jude saint or what do they have for children oh yeah so they got saint jude's like one of my my fans really like saint jude's and you want to give it back give back to them you can sell shirts on on that sort of thing so yeah man um there's there's that so it's pretty easy there's also websites called like uh printful and stuff too where um, you have like what T one of the things that I don't like about Teespring per se is that it's very limited. They don't have that much of a huge selection. The cool thing about Teespring though is like under your YouTube channel, if you set it up, you can actually display all your merch so you can drive more sales and stuff like that. <clears throat> so this is like printful, right? And uh, if you think if you start uh create a basic order if you go on the printful like uh design and stuff like you can uh fuck so slow so they have their own type of thing and you can see there's a lot more customizability so you can actually like do three four t sleeve t-shirts and stuff which teespring doesn't have personally if i were to do this over again i would probably go to printful just because of the design and stuff um but yeah 
so really you know one of the reasons why i wanted to show this was just because like a lot of people say that starting a t-shirt company or any clothing type of thing can be very expensive and it's really hard to do but literally if you work fast uh, you can literally have everything done within like a, a day if you really wanted to personally for me one of the reasons why it took me such a long time to do it was just because i want to make sure that you know everything fit right everything was like good you know like the actual design came the way i wanted to and sometimes the fulfillment can take a take a little long time but like just in case like let's say if you like for example let's say if you guys wanted to do like pharmacy shirts or, or something like that then this is a great way if you guys want to fundraise for your apha type of event or something like that this is a really easy way you don't have to you don't have to deal with buying having extra shirts on hand and all that sort of shit you know <clears throat> uh let me read some of the trolley comments <laughs> um cool what's up with these trolls bringing people down funny how you hide hide behind a certain screen and talk down on someone who contributes to other people with his ideas and experiences so true man like dude that's one thing like guess what i'm very happy that i have trolls first of all because it means i'm doing something right the more trolls the the, the more trolls the more followers i have it doesn't matter that comes with the territory but I always find it very fucking funny when trolls never ever show their face. And here's the thing. If a troll wants to get on screen with me, let's see how you look like in real life. Let's see how you look like in real life and show your face. Stop hiding behind a, a screen. Stop hiding just behind an emoji. Uh, um, as an Asian American, I fully approve of refugee hustle. Keep on hustling, Kevin. Thank you. Like a lot of people, you know, if you're not, if you don't like, because here's the thing, my family, the reason why I named refugee hustle with Joe was just because like, I felt so strongly about it because, you know, my, my family comes from an immigrant family background, right? So they sacrificed everything in life to, to just like come to this country. And it wasn't even like once they came to this country, it was all rainbows and shit. No, they were fucking hard to get here. You know, they worked really fucking hard to get here. And I remember my grandma, both my grandmas actually worked in sewing factories to kind of make it, to make ends meet, to make all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I think in the future, like, you know, most of my, my content is very pharmacy based, right? But I want to help people create additional means of income, right? So this is one easy way. You don't have to put anything down. Like if you're just to start, hell. You know, this is a really easy way and it's one of the easiest ways to start like in like start your own online business in less than like a day. Seriously, it's really cool. I think one of the things that I always tell people is that one of my dreams is always be able to help people like around the world while I either take a shit or watch porn up. So, yeah, um, somebody is asking, do I still live in Koreatown? How do I afford the rent there? Dude. I it's is that any of your business? I I live off savings, dude. What are your thoughts on Wong Fu Yappy shows? Um I think they're okay. Uh I I saw a few of them, but uh I saw a few of them, but you know, I think they bring up some interesting points like interracial dating and whatnot. Um I don't know, like uh I don't really have a strong opinion about it, but yeah. I'm fourth generation Asian American dude. I'm glad to see another Canto guy making good shit. There's not a lot of ton on YouTube. Yeah, that's why I gravitated so much toward like fucking Dan Locke and shit, you know? Um, just because it's not that often that we see Cantonese people like ourselves, you know, out on the web. Kevin, how would a, would a troll go down seeing you on cam face to face? Amigo or how? Do you have a Discord? Uh, no, I do not have a Discord. Dude, we could like, dude, I would open up, up a Zoom room if you want. If there's any trolls that want to pop in, they could dro drop into a Zoom room. So it, does anybody want to freaking step up and we can just have a discussion right here and see why you're a fucking asshole? I'm more than happy to do that. <clears throat> but yeah, so like I feel very strongly about about really empowering people and showing people alternative ways to to live as well you know um 
for me, like, as you guys know, with pharmacy, I wasn't really super happy with it. And people are always wondering, how can I get out? How can I get out? And so if I could show something like this, that'd be really good. Also, uh, my friend is creating a cool course. Uh, he has a free course, so you guys can check this out. But let me go back to the desktop. So he has like a free program on how to start a clothing brand with, uh, with Teespring. So, or, uh, Printful and you can start your own streetwear brand with print on demand. You guys can check that out if you want. I'll leave all the links in below. Um, I think the only affiliate link I have is for Fiverr. So you can check that out. Um, but yeah, man, that is my talk about print on demand, man. I know like earlier I had a bunch of like, uh, I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of, um, like kind of hiccups in, in the stream and stuff, but yeah, man, I think, um, here's the thing, uh, like it's one thing to create just a brand and create all the designs and stuff. It's another thing to really be able to market it out that I'll be honest. Like I haven't played with uh printful or teespring enough to really market it out and do like Facebook ads and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I just thought it would be a cool way for people to support my channel, support my work and stuff as well. You should consider personal coaching for Asian Americans who are typically shy and nerdy like myself, either for PUA or personal development. You are a role model to us. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, for PUA, I don't think I would really, really be good at PUA and stuff, but definitely personal development. I, I've spent so much money on personal development, learning all these things like, dude, you see my bookcase, you see like all the things I do, right? And um, I'm always just trying to help people at the end of the day, you know, like when I book calls with people, when I talk to people, first thing I always ask is how can I help you? How can I help you? This topic today, this was not planned today. I uh, literally asked my friend, Hey, how can I help you? They want to know how to start a clothing line with no money down, start merch. I don't know. Maybe you have your own thing. Maybe you really like gaming. Just fucking do it. It's zero risk. You know, all you gotta do is find it, like create a design. And if you don't want to pay for a design, not even on Fiverr, let's say five bucks is way too much. You can't afford it. Fine. Okay. Let's let's, and you want to do your own designs or you want more creativity. You can do it on like Photoshop or just even Microsoft paint and, and shit. I really want to show people that, Hey, it doesn't really take that much work to start, start, uh, online business. And literally you can do it within, uh, less than a day. This dude is clowning you, Kevin, Instagram, PJ, PJ, uh, go to Instagram. Good business and mission, Kevin. Keep on doing your thing. Best. Awesome. Yeah, dude. And you know, it's pretty funny. Um, I, I was never really into clothing, but I know like a lot of the pharmacy, uh, I know a lot of the pharmacy channels too, like, or like a lot of the pharmacy organizations, they deal with, um, they, they sometimes need fundraising and dude, back when I was in pharmacy school, people would raise all this money. They would all raise all this money, uh, or they would try to save money and to buy shirts. And then they would always have leftover shirts that they couldn't get rid of. If you use print on demand, sure, the cost of the shirt is a lot higher, right? But at least you're not left with all these shirts and you, at least you can actually sell to people who actually want a freaking shirt rather than like blowing all this money on shirts that no one cares about, you know? So yeah, man. Um, but but yeah, man, I think like, um, powerful branding is the number one thing that you can actually do to create a shirt or, or company that really stands out. Like, uh, I actually met up with a friend yesterday and he has this company called, I don't know. I forgot girls gone good or something. I, I'll put it in the link below if I remember it, but he has a women empowerment brand too. And I thought that was really inspiring. He's trying to, he, ha he has daughters 
And what he's trying to do is really kind of empower women around the world. And like someone like me, I'm not like, I'm not the role model for empowering women and shit, right? But whatever your interest is, you can actually create a brand off of it. Oh, Kevin, you're equivalent to the wannabe rock star guy from the 80s. Back in the 80s, every guy wanted to be famous rock star and would spend their time playing guitar. And then in their 30s, with nothing to their name. Blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to ban you too. Cool. Cool, bro. I don't really like, here's the thing. You want to make the zoom? Okay, let's do it. I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm going to set this up. It's going to be like a dick pic or something. I'm going to turn off. I'm going to turn off your, uh, freaking video. Just be, just in case you send a dick pic or something. Let's see. Let's see what these trolls look like, man. Let's end this meeting. Let's start. Dude, I'm ready, man. I can't wait. I'm going to start my new room. Start a new room. Stop feeding them? Okay. Okay. I won't be a dick. I'll just start banning. That's cool. Oh my god. This is so... Hide. Don't feed them. Okay. Okay. You guys are right. I'm wrong. I shouldn't be feeding the trolls, but it feels so fucking good. I don't know why I would just want to light these trolls on fire, but you guys are right. Let me ask you guys. I mean, have you guys ever for the, for my true fans and stuff, have you guys ever really wanted to start your own clothing brand or start anything with like clothing before? <clears throat> Okay, cool. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. Dan Locke would probably roast them too. That he would probably make content out of them to uh roast them, but yeah. I did a few years ago, but honestly it's too late to profit now. Let me ask you, I mean, now that I showed you something like print on demand. Um, what would you do? Like, what would be stopping you from doing something like print on demand, especially if it's like a little risk as a musician, you kind of have to. Yeah. I think it's like, I think clothing and like all that sort of stuff. Like see the thing with refugee hustle, like, yeah, I create content. I create YouTube videos. I create all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, I think like, but it's, it becomes more than just like what you do. It becomes the brand behind it. I think one of the videos I really resonated with, like, was actually by Barquan, right? He was talking about how Red Bull is actually an event company and they happen to just make uh, energy drinks as well. Same with like Barbell Brigade. Um, they make clothes, they own a gym, but they're actually like a lifestyle business. So it's really cool. Uh, are you planning to expand your clothing beyond shirts like business attire? Um, I don't really know. To be honest, I just wanted to try something out just so that I could uh, share my experience with you guys. I don't even, to be honest, I don't really know if I'm going to really jump into this and take this really seriously. I just thought it would be, uh, um, I think it would just be really, really cool to just, um, be able to, 
I think it would just be really cool to just share an experience, you know, um, because, because like, I think these days it's really about multiple streams of revenue, right? You can just have one revenue stream, like how I did in pharmacy, but let's say if you lose it, then what, what do you do? So the more streams of revenue that you have, even if they're not super profitable, then the more you minimize your risk, it's the same concept of like things like index funds where you buy so many different, you buy a lot of different funds, you're diversifying your risk, right? Same what comes with uh, streams of revenue. So in my opinion, like something like a t-shirt company, very, very low risk, and it doesn't take that much. And this is a renewable asset, right? If you think, if you have a really cool dessert, uh, shirt design that really means something to people, then you can keep on scaling it, do paid ads, all that sort of stuff. Um, I go bankrupt instantly. How would you go bankrupt, son? Like this is a free design, man. I think it's, let me show you guys some other cool designs like on Teespring and stuff. Um, on the regular T, if you even go to a Teespring uh, website, hold on, let me just open this up. If you go on the Teespring like website, they even have like, oh shit. Like, let's say if I go here, they always have like uh, recommended items too. Here, I'll look for this offline so you guys don't have to see, but Okay, cool. So You can see that people have different shirts, right? So this these are like the top shirts like recommended for me and whatnot. So there's like a I mean, there's a shirt with a pizza. There's some like designs and stuff, but look at this design over here, this t-shirt design. It doesn't really, it doesn't really, uh, with the love and stuff, this isn't that complicated to make same with like this, right? This, this is a top like performing shirt, right? But it doesn't really like all the only thing you're doing is just text. So let's say you're really uncreative. You really suck with Photoshop. You really suck, suck with Pixelmator or any sort of like uh, graphic software. Then you can even just do something like a catchy, catchy thing. Um, I'm not going to lie for a while. I actually thought about doing pharmacy shirts and was like, dude, I would do like corny ass pickup lines. I mean, like pharmacy pickup lines and stuff. So you can tell like, you know, it doesn't really require that much, that much work, you know? The only thing it requires is a lot of time. And that's one of the things that, oh yeah. So one of the things that, um, I mean, if you don't, if you're not going to be paying a lot of money, then that's what you sacrifice. It's always like a time versus, um, versus, uh, money type of thing, you know? So there's tons of shirts, tons of shirts, tons of shirts, right? And there's all in different, different niches, right? So if you take a look at this totally gay shirt, right? Who is it targeted to? Probably not straight people, right? <laughs> Probably not to a lot of straight people. Um, or like if, like, let, let's look for pharmacy shirts because I guarantee you there is pharmacy, there's pharmacy apparel for people as well, right? Uh, let me just load that. Right. So like, look at these pharmacy shirts. They're not, uh, they're not that complicated, right? Maybe like just chill. I'm a pharmacist. I don't take drugs. I'm a pharmacist that really, you can go really niche market and you can find a niche that you really dominate. Let's say if you're, you're really into gaming too, like Starcraft or something like that guaranteed there's a, there's a Starcraft type of thing as well. So depending what you're interested in, one of your shirts can actually do very well, you know? And, uh, yeah. And this is where, like, I think if you're really witty with words or you're like really into, like, if you have humor and stuff, this is where it can really hit. Um, <clears throat> merch sells better than music these days. I already, I started already. Awesome, Andre. That's great to hear. The quality of clothing would stop me. So that's why I went premium. You know, 
my shirts are all premium that's why my my prices are a lot higher and plus i'm giving i want to give more back to refugees right but like uh the next level like one one thing i would say is the next level premium tees are where it's at that's the high that's one of the highest quality uh shirts that you can buy right and don't get me wrong i'm planning to do a more um so this is kind of like a rough outline of how i want to want to like talk about the subject but if you guys want i can actually do a long video about like a long not stream but long video about how to start like clothing step by step by step and i'll take you on the exact journey i went um it's all about your vertical don't buy shirts because of quality necessarily but more sold on the story um i would say it's a mixture of both right story and quality like to me i've bought really cheap shirts and honestly people don't want to wear it imagine if your shirt the material isn't that great then um the the material isn't that great but let me just put this guy on on a uh, block but if the material is not that great then um no one wants to wear the shirt and people i'm not saying it in a lot this is logical but when they ever wear your shirt they associate your brand with cheapness or it's not very comfortable and shit you know i want something that's actually comfortable for people and that's high quality and that's fitted you know Although I'm not like a fashion guru either. I wouldn't say I like I'm hype beast like streetwear and shit like that either. Um, it's all about your vertical. People don't buy shirts of quality necessarily if you're sold on a story, which is why Kanye can get away with selling $200 t-shirts. Speaking about branding, um, if you actually check it, let me close some of these tabs. But I want to show you this article I actually wrote the other day, right? Uh, RefugeeHustle.com. cool so have you guys ever heard of kopi lua coffee so i was actually introduced to this coffee i think through dan lock actually he used it an example in one of his things but it's basically this is a picture of two chains drinking it two chains um but i actually talk about like how exactly to position yourself as a higher brand, right? So for most coffee, right? How much do you guys pay for coffee? Maybe anywhere from two to six to eight dollars at the high high range. And most people are like, why the fuck would I spend that much on coffee? Well, there's people that like specialty coffee a lot, right? And so how do you charge like hundred dollars per cup of coffee is a lot. You're literally charging 50 times more than everyone else. And so um, one of the since we're talking about since we're talking about branding and stuff right um everybody like one important thing you want to sell the story not the features right so for something like for something like um for something like coffee right does McDonald's and stuff have a really strong story about how they create their coffee? No. But if you go on the Kopi Luwak website, they actually go from start to finish. How these animal, these cat-like creatures, they fucking eat these coffee beans and then they shit it out. And then they like literally pick it out, they wash it, they hand dry it and all that sort of stuff, right? And they talk about how these, the story of, about these like civet cats how they're so freaking happy wandering through the jungles and like eating these things. So when you have the, the thing is, is like, if you take a look at like a Buzzfeed art, Buzzfeed video, like, like, um, worth it. Right. I think that's a great example. Like when you look at the higher tier items, they always tell a longer and longer story. Right. Uh, are you, and here's the second rule, right? High ticket items never go on sale. You'll never see uh, Kanye ever discount his prices or anything like that. You'll never really see LV or like um, or like Rolex for cheap. I mean, if you did see like a one dollar watch or something, how would that make you feel, right? So when you when you charge premium items, people have a certain feeling associated. Now you can't just like give a one dollar item and just charge like five hundred uh five hundred dollars for it. There has to be a story and you have to, it has to be a little bit more about that. But the final thing is like, Hey, you know, uh, this is my favorite part. 
of this article it was just like dude when i was watching two chains drink this coffee the host was like hey can you taste the difference between this like hundred dollar coffee and he was like hell nah so it's a perfect example why people don't actually buy products or services they actually buy the product about uh to make them how they feel right when two chains drinks this coffee he guaranteed he feels like a baller he doesn't feel like a bro he doesn't want to wait in a mcdonald's line and be like everyone else he wants some exclusive shit he wants to buy into that rich lifestyle it's the way that it makes him feel it's not just the item itself and it's clearly clearly when two chains says hell nah so i just thought that would be some cool branding some stuff that you should think about your shirt should you charge $200 per shirt? Maybe. You probably can't do it on Teespring. Maybe you could do it on Printful. And you have to have a really cool story about it. But this is like, this is the thing, right? For example, Kirkland, right? Costco brand. This is probably the same manufacturer as LaCroix. But why can LaCroix tra charge more? It's because of branding. I mean, Kirkland, I mean... It's like it's Costco brand, but doesn't really have a story behind it. LaCroix is more probably uh, more willing to tell a story about how they do it and shit. I don't know. But yeah. Back to the comments. But this is why I love marketing, because it's like it's so much more than just um, selling expensive items like ripping or ripping people off and shit um dude it's really about um it's really about learning how the the mind works right and this is why like when you pay for college you're more likely like let's 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 say let's take two examples let's say you buy a book any sort of book right versus go to college what are you willing to what are you going to pay more attention to what are you more likely to take notes and really focus on you know you might learn some cool stuff from a book but chances are you're probably going to take um, take take college like a college course a lot more seriously since a lot more skin is in the game a lot more is on the line right um people would love to see you vlogging in different la uh eateries in la you could do successful food channel i'm not really much of a foodie so i don't think i can actually uh really do a great job at it to be honest with you um, where do you get good quality that is cheap? <clears throat> Dude, where do you get an LV bag that is cheap? Where do you get a Rolex that is cheap? Um, here's the thing. If you're looking for a really, really good quality, uh, like, like luxury quality, and you're looking for the cheap, you're always bound to get ripped off. That's where people get ripped off. How do you feel if, I, even if it was a legit Rolex, how would you feel if I offered it to you for $1? Sure, you might buy it, right? But how confident would you feel that's actually a legit item, right? That's why, like, I never, ever, ever, ever buy, like, if I, I don't, first of all, I'm not into luxury goods, right? That's not my thing. But you bet your ass I would not be caught dead buying, buying, um, buying, like, luxury goods off the street of Chinatown because you know they're all fake and they're known for that too, especially the city of uh, Shenzhen. Literally... <clears throat> Um, I just want to tear up some shirts, throw a random picture on and charge premium prices on them. Oh wait, Supreme got you covered. Supreme is actually very interesting. And actually my friend talks, uh, if you look at my friend's course, he actually talks about the rise of Supreme and stuff. And I think Supreme, like Supreme is a great example of strong branding. They literally will sell you a stupid ass fire extinguisher. They'll sell you a fucking brick. Why? Why do people buy? I mean, you can go Home Depot. You can buy a fucking brick, right? But why do people buy a Supreme brick? It makes them feel exclusive. They're buying that feeling of exclusivity. They want to buy that feeling of being like a hipster and shit. Uh... Take, just take Joe Coles from JK News. Um, where literally you can't go wrong with Banana Republic t shirts for $10 each. Yo, Banana Republic t shirts are pretty good. So, yeah. I mean, some people who are personalities literally, can literally sell, beat up your tank tops for $50 like crazy. Yeah. And I think it's like really easy to hate on these companies that charge a lot of money. But here's the thing. Um, People buy it and they buy it for a reason. 
not because they're stupid because they like the way it makes them feel when you pay for expensive items they make you feel a certain way and if you never had a luxury experience in your life try it out save up save up i don't know maybe like for me clothing is not my thing i do not like buy hypey shit you'll never see me in like fucking yeezys or anything like that it's because i'm not i'm not materialistic like that but definitely like for me my my expensive taste comes in courses right when i invest in my education i care about education the most out of everything so i'm not scared to buy expensive courses because i feel like it's an investment in myself right um when i bought my first mont blanc pen like i wanted to take education and uh seriously and for me that's like everything i do everything i write i just feel like hey you know i'm putting that into my business so it's a psychological psychological thing you know um let's be like i i only recommend like like even if you're not interested i challenge you guys go to a mont blanc store and ask them hey like tell me about this pen what makes this pen different from like a big pen and just go in there you notice the small little things it's just like it's similar to a car dealership but they give you some water they give you some tea they give you some sort of thing they take you through the story of Mont Blanc a day but I was just testing out like the uh, fountain pens and seeing how how that was and it was really really cool um that's true oh fuck my 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 thing is dying let's see let me read some of the comments right now that's true lv actually burn their purses that, that uh that they cannot sell it's very true um and i think um i forgot who does it uh i was looking at i was looking it up but you'll never see you'll never see discounted stuff because it hurts the longevity of the brand and if you let's say if you buy like an lv bag or something like that you buy a full price i don't know let's say you buy a ten thousand dollar lv bag okay i don't even know if that exists but let's pretend right and the next day they have a fire sale they sell it for one dollar how would that make you feel would that make you want to buy another lv bag probably not you know um is it a waste do i agree with it hell no i don't, i think that's a huge waste but does it make sense as a brand wise probably well at the end of the day shit is great when you make it in coffee just uh just make sure not to throw it all, all away sourcing for material overseas is an option for keeping cost low and keeping quality somewhat high that is true you can go out of yeah oh, but here's the thing like you can find you're like here's my my thing right you can probably find something at at its like range right so if you want to look for a low cost type of thing you can if you want to look for something medium range you can if you want to look for high range you can but don't expect to look for a high like high end item at a low price range you're bound to get ripped off people take advantage of that uh take advantage of that those type of people you know um <clears throat> the major cost comes with shipping so it'll be massive orders for you break even in profit that's why i think print on demand is so great because you know when you have when you have to when you're forced to buy so much all at once especially if you're here's the thing print on demand is a great idea if you're just trying to test out an idea if you want to see if a t-shirt brand a t-shirt does well or not how do you know if people are going to buy teespring offers like things like teespring or printful they offer a really easy way to just um to just test out a product to see if it works and if it does if it does work hey you know that people are interested okay they're interested in the shirt maybe at that point you can buy massive orders and just take do your own fulfillment there but to be honest i i think most people watching this aren't really looking to to ramp up quite yet they're just looking to get started and it's one of the easiest way it's kind of like um the building blocks you know you don't learn you don't you don't learn how to ride a bike with no training wheels at first maybe some people do by falling on their ass but it's a lot easier to you know start off with two training wheels right and then take one off and then take the other one off and then next thing you know you can ride a bike it's just slowly ramping it up building up your business acumen and whatnot you know so 
taking the leap of faith all at once not always a great idea kevin do you still work out hell yeah i do um rem says learn the hard way not to go cheap on essentials hell yeah especially like um <clears throat> everyday essentials right shirts and whatnot or like um like your phone those are or your computer you want to buy the best computer that you can and make it last as long as you can um that's what i did i mean like i have a 2013 mac it's 2018 it's still running i can still edit all my videos on it it's been a really good investment for me so like for me this has been one of the best investments of my life just because i decided not to go with a 200 dollar netbook which i had which honestly broke in like broke with it or stopped working within i think three or four, like five years and stuff so that's why i'm saying like buy quality like to me i'm a quality person now like i've i've done my fair share in hong kong where you go to like the fucking cheap like lit you go to like um the golden computer center in hong kong buy all this cheap shit just to have a break it's more frustrating to look again for those items and it's not reliable i mean certain things if you don't give a fuck about it yo go cheap dude it doesn't matter but i think it really depends like the things that you care about the most pay money for them don't go cheap don't go don't go always the chinese asian route man <clears throat> um banana republic where else do you recommend back to school shirts and all that uh express uh stay away from gap t-shirts they shrink uh gap t-shirts too they um they like they're not that they like i don't know they wither away over time i tried them some of them are good some of them suck ass but yeah, I know a lot of people use Banana Republic for their, their t-shirts like when they do print-on-demand t-shirts as well. I think my t-shirt right now is like next level, um, next level tees. Those are really good. I, Dude, I just, I don't know. I just love the material. It feels so good. Um, yeah, man, and I, I highly recommend them. Gap always, Gap always sounds shady. I had one that shrink. I'll try Express. Express is okay too. Uh, I have I had a lot of express shirts as well. If you're a student, there's a 15 to 20. Look at 5T, man. Has all the freaking hookups, son. Hookups, son. This is the refugee hustle community, man. We Who needs slick deals? All right. So, guys, I mean, let me, let me ask you. Do you have any quick questions before uh, I close up my stream? Because I'm about to head out soon i i will do a um a more condensed version of this stream because like near the beginning i fucking couldn't like uh i was like trying to figure out my screen share and shit and i finally figured it out uh i was dealing with trolls but i want to create like this is what i'm thinking nowadays like a lot of the ideas that i have kind of want to present them with the stream and see how it goes and think about what works what doesn't and then create a like video or article behind it let me know guys uh what's the best button shirt though hmm you know what i'm actually struggling with that if anybody knows about a really good button shirt because honestly like for me uh i want like i've i've been going on amazon look at these five star reviews but here's the thing when they're really cheap they just fucking fall apart within like maybe not a year like maybe not a year but like around a year they start like literally the threads start coming apart and all that sort of bullshit too <clears throat> let us know when you're streaming next i'll tune in i stream every sun by the way zach i always stream every single sunday at 6 p.m pacific standard time so usually i stream for about an hour hey man you're awesome your videos are very informative thank you hey let me ask you before i head out what kind of um like while well, i have all 18 of you guys here what kind of content are you guys interested in? Like, is there certain topics that you want me to talk about? Let me know right now. I think Zara Oxford shirts are pretty good. I always wear them. I can't wear Zara though. Oh, well, maybe I'll try again. Uh, because I was like fucking pretty fat when I was like checking out Zara. So I could not fit them before. Uh, I wear express. I, ex I wear express button ups, but I don't know any other brand. It has a nice tailor fit and high quality. 
You know what I like doing? Yeah, I have a few express shirts, but over the years, like, they just come undone. Maybe that's just stress shirts in general. But I always, like, take my shirts and actually go to the tailor for them. It's just so, so they're, like, actually fitted and shit. I think what I realized, back in the day, like, I don't have my ghetto clothes in my closet. But, you know, like, I used to wear a lot of baggy shit because uh, I was, like, part of that hood life, the gangster hip-hop life. And then, um, you know, as I got older, I was just like, oh, damn, like, girls actually compliment me when I wear fitted clothes and like everything from my t-shirts to everything. Look at this crazy ass tan line. I look like a uh, hillbilly man. <laughs> I just like hearing you talk about stuff. Awesome. Asian upbringing, breaking out of it. Uh, I actually had this really good idea with Brian. Um, we were going to do, I asked him today if he wanted to do a stream about what it's like dating as an Asian American, um, Asian American guy, right? Because I feel like we have our own sort of views on dating and stuff. So that's one topic that I know Brian wants to talk about. But you like hearing me talk about stuff. Um, can't go wrong with Uniqlo. Uh, Uniqlo is okay. I just bought, I think I bought like a hoodie from them recently. Um, Asian upbringing, breaking out of it. That's my story. Pretty much it's like podcast for me. UFC, gym, MMA. Please cover those topics. Okay, cool. So you want MMA just curious like uh if i were to talk about like jujitsu and stuff or like mma um hold on let me take a picture dude i'm putting up a video on uh asian dating definitely put a video on that okay cool dude i'm dude zach i didn't know that you have your own youtube uh let me i'm gonna follow your channel right now i'm gonna save it for later but i'll follow your channel like, if I were to talk about jujitsu and stuff, like, what would you want to know? Like, I actually, if you guys haven't subscribed to my, uh, to my refugee hustle newsletter, let me show you exactly what I actually talked about today. Um, and then I'll close out the stream. Cause speaking about jujitsu, I actually talked about jujitsu in this week's thing. I actually put a lot of work into this, uh, refugee hustle letter this week investment options okay cool what exactly about investments like how to how to get started what do you want like tax like um the different taxable accounts or like the actual investments what do you want what do you want to know and if i don't know oh shit and if i don't know something i can always uh bring on a guest too that i know no shit where is this oh, here we go much appreciated means a lot man green tea how's the Z quality on zara dude zara is pretty uh pretty good too like the quality um zach king are asians better at math i'm like looking at your page right now <laughs> i subscribe bro i'm number 22 i'm your 22 savage bro <laughs> so i always love supporting my fans and i always love supporting people that show me love man Yeah, so for anybody that's like really interested in more of my like thoughts and stuff too, like uh this week I actually talk about feeling stuck in my like my insomnia. Like I've been struggling with insomnia so bad and it's been really affecting and like like my not my confidence, but like it's been really a struggle. I beat myself up whenever I don't get stuff done. So I talk about my insomnia this week. Uh I talk about marketing and stuff, like that two chains coffee. Um I talk about my first paycheck actually with like f my first paycheck when I was uh, pushing carts, my first pharmacy check. And now my, like one of my, my biggest, uh, well, my first major entrepreneur, uh, check, which is really cool. My click funnels, right. Share a video. That's very personal to me. I like literally 
ball my eyes out <laughs> in this video. And uh, I talk about what it's like rolling with a fucking jujitsu black belt who is like the OG. He's like the OG jujitsu. It's not like the new new school jujitsu where it's just like um like 10th planet where it's like like they have all these crazy moves he just had this like like traditional style where i was just getting triangle choked all the fucking time and um what it's like like getting your ass kicked uh i do a breakdown of pharmacy school worth it and i give like my book recommendation so yeah man like dude i'm like really uh hold on let me go back but yeah like Th those are some of the content ideas that I have like when I share my thing and I always do I'm starting to do personal videos now for every RH letter I do you know where it's kind of like this it's a heart to heart with you I'm trying to make everything a lot more personal rather than like so automated because like let's be honest like every single fucking time like I sign up for in uh email like there's always these um it just feels so impersonal, right? People are just putting you on this automation, automation, automation. I have nothing wrong against automation, but man, it just feels so impersonal, man. Only laugh my ass off. Only 22 subs. Yo, here's the thing, Zach. If you only got 22 subs, um, shit, like you gotta get started somewhere and you're, 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 22 subs further than you were like probably like a week ago, you know, when you first started or whenever you started, you know? <sighs> oh, snap. What what up, Kevin? This is Aaron Yoon. AJ, Liu Kang, getting your ass kicked gets me hooked in. Lol. Yeah, it's really, it's really crazy. I think jujitsu is like something where it constantly reminds me that I'm always a beginner at heart, right? Sure. If somebody comes off the street, yo, you bet your ass they're probably going to end up in Americana or Kimura like if they're going against me right but here's the thing you go against someone who's 20 30 40 years or not 40 but 20 years ahead of you it has you feel like day one over again and that's one the one maybe I'm a little sadistic but <laughs> I love that feeling of uh, getting my ass kicked like because I realize that I have so much more to go that the learning never stops that um you know it's just like a growth when you're ever uncomfortable in that moment i don't like getting fucking choked i don't like getting triangle choked every single time by a black belt right but through each rep i get a little and little little better zach you're killing a game bro i've told myself that i would start pumping out content since two years ago still haven't been done doing it man by t man like like dude if you're having trouble if i just hit me up let's let's talk about starting up your youtube channel like Let's do it. Let's, I, I will help you personally if you start up your U YouTube channel. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. I've helped spawn multiple channels like in this pharmacy niche, but you know, like, dude, it's all about getting your first video out and then the momentum keeps on going and going and going. Like I know recently I've been slacking on the YouTube videos, but so many, so many things I'm doing right now that, uh, I I'm learning how to leverage my content a lot better. Uh, thanks to, by the way, follow Lake Okane. Um, he is a really great, uh, resource. He has a website called rich and niche, a uh, really great resource on how to his like Gary V deck content deck fucking gold son, fucking gold son. I love that. Like I've been learning how to better structure my content so that, you know, I can to make one piece of content and make it more valuable, give more value and be on a lot of different platforms. So it's really cool. A uh, little smiley girl says, Kevin, I have a question. I'm PY, PY, you're going through appies. I'm finished up. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to stay on here for a little longer. It looks like a lot more people are jumping in and dude, I would love to, I'm going to try to help you guys. Anyone that's in here, I'll get like, dude, tell me one thing that I can help you with and let's go. Let's do this. Fuck it. <clears throat> um, I'm finishing out my second, uh, appy rotations are both acute care. These 12 weeks have been so hard. Um, I'm just wondering what your question is. I feel not up to par with other fourth year students. Do you have any recommendations or advice to get through appy rotations? Um, yeah. So, <sighs> Hey dude. It's, it's tough. I get it. You know, you're, you're probably being so overwhelmed right now and you feel like compared to other students, you just don't know, but 
ask more questions and just really try. I think one of the hardest things is just uh, to figure out like what you don't know. And everyone has a preceptor. Maybe one of these days, take your preceptor aside and just tell her, tell your preceptor. You're just like, dude, I've just, I just feel so overwhelmed right now. And I feel like I'm not performing up to par. What are some things that I can work on? Right. And maybe you go ask them. And maybe you ask your the other students just like, hey, you know, like, honestly, I don't feel like I'm doing that well. What do you think I can improve on? So getting feedback and it's really it's one of those things that's like really hard. It's like ripping off a bandaid. But after you do it, you feel so much better. You know, like sometimes in jujitsu, I just ask like, dude, what am I what am I not doing? What am I overlooking? What don't I know? I do that when I close. I do that when any any sort of skill that I do, you know, and that's how you get better. You get better through more reps and by asking those really difficult questions. <clears throat> uh, why Yin says I had insomnia before three months ago and it was so frustrating. You should try a chamomile tea or something before you go to sleep. Establish a night. No, <laughs> why Yin? I've been, I know all that stuff, man. Uh, try chamomile tea um like gaba like every single fucking thing dude on the earth you know um i think one of the things that's really triggering me is at nighttime when uh it's just really hot i don't have like an ac in my room so i just like open the window put on the fan um yeah man it's just it's just really that and uh i'm trying some different things too uh i think part of it is like I feel like there's so much going on in my life and there's so many projects I want to do like, like this project where I wanted to, um, I want to give back to refugees, man. That's, that means so much to me, like be able to create projects where it really impacts people. Right. And, um, yeah, I think part of it is just like me giving myself my own downtime because I, I, I know like when I spend the time to just like go to the beach or, go on a hike or just spend some time like outdoors outside do something else other than work i feel so relaxed and i slept like a fucking baby um and that's why i love acupuncture so much and i think i'm thinking about doing an acupuncture session because that shit puts me asleep <clears throat> thanks lol youtube videos were scary as shit because i was too camera shy for so long after you do like 500 or like 600 videos on on camera you don't get that shy anymore man uh, I appreciate it, bro. Any of um starting up a YouTube content here. Let me let me screenshot this. Starting up a YouTube channel would be great content for sure. We'll support support that thousand percent, dude. That's yeah. yeah. Keep your eyes out for Lake Okane. I'll look up Lake Okane. Hey guys, I'm fading. I don't feel so good. Blackout curtains. Kind of off topic, but I've been doing no fat for a while. Ew, no fat. Uh, here, let me, I'll send you the Lake, uh, Lake Okane's Gary V deck. Um, especially if you're interested in like starting content creation, uh, subscribe to him, man. He's like a really good guy. Like I, I talked to Lake. He's a really, he's a really cool guy. He actually really cares about people. So I'm plugging in all my friends. I was plugging in my friend RKT creators earlier today for the, for the clothing course, which he gives for free um plugging in my refugee hustle store um and i'll i'll leave lake okane's uh link right here here you go that's lake okane's you want to start a a youtube brand he's he's the man he's a man on creating content <clears throat> um kind of off, off topic i'm doing no fat what if I told you, uh, what if you already told your preceptor that it's been hard, you're working hard to give your best? I feel like my preceptor is not that empathetic. When, and when I share this with the other students in resident, they tell me I'm putting too much pressure on myself, that you need to give some some s grace. Um, this is only second rotation. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're really right that, you know, you're a little too hard on yourself, you know? Um, typically, you're right. It's only your second rotation. How are you supposed to know everything, right? Have a little more compassion for yourself and just don't be so fixated on the results. And if you want to learn it, like what exactly do you not feel comfortable with, right? Like when you're like, try to identify that. Sometimes we get in these patterns where we're just like, 
we're just trying to think about how to um we just so get so caught up in the emotions that we just don't realize like what we don't know and we don't identify that fear or we don't identify what we need to work on so try to do that um if you want to boost your productivity do it kevin I personally let go of myself. I've been having a hard time sleeping nonstop depression for a period of time after ranting. I tried chamomile tea. It helped me get me back up along with some pep prep talk too. And I noticed something too, like, um, when I, when I, when I'm having like really little sleep or I'm having really shitty sleep, I, I don't want to say I get in a negative mood, but I get in a mood of like self doubt, you know, self doubt that I can't do certain things that, um, I don't know, man. It's just like, uh, it's just like kind of scary as an entrepreneur too, because, you know, now that I've made my first like major check, you know, and that's not the only check that I got, or that's not the only payment pending, right? There's a lot of other payments pending, but the real doubt comes in like when I, can I do it again? Is this sustainable? And I'm thinking way too, way too fucking much and not thinking about the daily things that I need to take care of every single day. <clears throat> Yo, green tea latte. I'll join you. I heard her talks, the benefits. Let's do it. Um, <clears throat> woo says Re woo rem. Um, I got hoes in different area codes. Rem no fab. Do it. Join the subreddit. No fab. Yeah. I used to be a no, no, uh, no, like, uh, no fab or not <laughs> at one point. Uh, I could, I've done it before. Honestly, at the end of the day, I didn't really feel anything. And honestly, I was kind of a uh, productivity is not my problem. It's really, I think it's really sleep and energy management. I think that's the number one thing. Uh, I'm like, let's be honest. I've always been like, for me, I've always been more very productive. And ever since I've been taking Dan Locke's courses and been his like, me like mentee and stuff, I've been a lot more focused in life. So yeah. Uh, honestly, it's a very helpful community. Look through a post and get some motivation to do it. You're probably, you're probably also too excited for your plans. You can do it. Yeah, I probably am way too excited. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of things and it's just like, I think what I realized these days is like in the past, it used to be a lot about me, you know, like I used to want my own success, but now like since I am like creating a team, I have so many people that look up to me and that I want to be great. I want to do so many things, not for, not only for my team, but for the people around me, I want to do great things for you guys. I want to, I want to give so much to this world. And I just feel like I'm just limited by limited by the number of days or hours I have in a day. Right. Um, which brings in the point of leverage and doing all this other stuff. Like, I'll be honest with you guys. So for my Teespring brand, like uh, the Teespring uh, shop that I set up, man, um, that my friend helped me out with, you know, I'm very grateful to have such caring people in my life. You know, so many people definitely want to help me and support me. Right. And I'm so grateful every single day that, that, uh, that I have these people in my life. Um, <clears throat> I got better sleep plus weaker arms. I'm convinced from that day. <laughs> Why do you want weaker arms, bro? You're going to get submitted. You're going to get Americana, bro. If you, you won't feel any benefits if you do it for a few days, you do it for a long term. I tried it like after my dad's death. Uh, I tried it for about, I did I think, I think like when I shot a video about it, but I didn't get to like a month per se, but I got up to maybe three weeks. So, um, it's, it actually were like, I felt like it worsened my negativity and association with sex, you know? Um, like I said, focus is not my problem. Sleep is my fucking problem, man. All right, guys, I think that's the end of my stream. I'm going to be meeting up my friends right now. But um, guys, I just want to say those who made it to the end of the stream, uh, this like how to start your own T-shirt brand and how to do that stuff. I screenshotted a lot of your questions that you had, you know, and uh, I hope you guys like it. You know, um, let's be honest.
Good night. Bye. Good night. I'll talk to you guys later. Got to head out.